Still on the ancient maps here. Uh, spawn on the left side is Zen Zej, and on the right side she may be Roman. Okay. Why am I blanking on the name of this one? I oh man, seeing all these maps just bring. Did Eel Illuminatus make make this one? I feel like this is an Eel map. I do remember this very distinctly though, because how kind of central centralized the uh, the mills are. Yeah, the, the map does look great, and and the uh, the mini map is is very good too. Yeah, it's an eel map. Nice. What was the name of it? Okay, so as it's going on though, a little bit of a roll, mole rush from Law and Order. That's right. Yeah, a little bit of mole rush, but Zen sees it, fixes it, and we're gonna just kind of macro up into eight farms here. I like the campfires, and I like that they're campfires instead of cabins, which I think this map was actually before cabins were in the game. Um, and the, the cabins aren't as useful as they used to be, I guess. It, it depends on the meta. I feel like the meta has been a little bit more of like a two base kind of thing at the high level, um, generally speaking. Not always, of course, but... When the meta is very one basey, you know the campfire is is the real MVP because it's about a twelve percent increase in your economy. And if the opponent doesn't know that, like I used to lose a ton of games when I was being a tryhard in Tooth and Tail, where I would I would play the game and you know I'm really trying to be analytical and, and thinking, you know, just like we were talking about the last game with all of like where my windows are, okay, how much food have we traded, that kind of stuff. And then I like barely lose to a few squirrels. I look at the replay, and then you know Marmu or somebody has a campfire like down here. I never scouted, and like that difference makes it makes a makes a large impact on fights. But speaking of fights, Roman getting aggressive here has one chameleon on the front line already. Zinsez trying to be a little bit uh, a little bit more creative, I suppose, with the ferret opening in the the ninja mill in the south. Uh, that chameleon did go down, so that's really good for Zen. Roman really committing to that pig, does get the pig. And is this gonna be enough damage? Oh, great reveal on that cam coming up. Gonna try to focus down the ferret, it's not gonna work. And this defense from Roman was excellent. Uh, or, I'm sorry, from Zen Sesh was excellent. Roman is in a little bit of a tough spot now. Did manage to take a pig out there, but just generally Zen traded a lot better. Chameleons aren't the best at attacking into a base like that. Chameleons are super strong, like, out in the open. Um, especially when you get up to, like, four of them. But I think maybe Roman should have waited for the, the pair of cams at the very least. It was kind of like one cam and then another cam. And Zen's going to pull the trigger here and try to counterattack. And the ferrets are actually doing a great job tanking so much damage. One eventually goes down, but it's really the squirrels you need to be worried about here. Zen's gonna grab a pig, start thinking about retreating maybe. This ferret's standing strong, but needs to get out of there. One HP? Oh my god, it lives with one HP. Even tries to get a squirrel on the clap back there. And in the meantime, Zen does have this uh, hidden southern base. Really another interesting thing about this map is expanding is a little bit awkward. I guess you are supposed to expand backwards maybe? is the intent. Like, you take the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock there, respectively. Another push in from Zen here. I think I like Roman's army comp better, but does Roman have the army value is the question. Oh, great turret here. Zen trying to bait back to the turret. Roman's staying right out of range of that defense there. Again, the problem for Roman is they, they probably think they're, they're in a lot better of a position than they really are. Because they think it's 7 farms to 7 farms, but it's really not. Zen has got 11 farms, right? He's got the campfire and the 3 down here as well. And this may just be that, see, like... I feel like Roman is playing correctly. With the information that Roman has, this makes sense. Let's keep the pressure up. I got Squirrel Mole Cam against just Squirrel Ferret. I got the better, better army. 
And now Roman's probably feeling pretty frustrated. They're probably like, you know, how am I losing these fights? You know, yeah, that first attack didn't grow that great for Roman, but these follow-up attacks should be going better. And the reason is because Zen Sedge's economy is just so much better. And Roman has no idea. So this can be very frustrating. It, it's always tough when you lose a match and you're not really sure why you lost. And obviously I don't know how Roman's feeling after that, but if I was Roman, that that's how I would be feeling. I would just kind of be confused. I'd be like, I, I don't get it. You know, I had the better army comp. You know, I, I took some fairly okay engagements. You know, what, what kind of happened? Going into game number two here. After Zen wins the first one off, off some uh, hidden economy there. In the bottom we got Zen rocking the fox this time. Up top Roman with the owl. This map's a bit scrappy. I, I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this map. It's very abusive with, with the way that the cliffs are. But as I say that, it, it doesn't come up as much as you, you probably think it would. Because players are very aware of that. So... On this map, what you kind of got to do is you really have to claim this territory up here. Like, you can't just let your opponent get this position. Or the game pretty much ends. So that's something that both players need to really consider here. And, and it, you're kind of caught in a, in a rough situation because... You know, one hand you want to expand, right, and start claiming this area above your base. But on the other hand, I mean, look how close these expansions are, right? I mean, you expand, I mean, the territories are almost touching, right, right on the spawn, right? So you expand, I mean, you are right next to the opponent. Falcons are a really good choice here. Get that, get that high ground vision. Pigeons for Roman will accomplish the same goal. Zen a little greedy here with the tier 2 opener. I think if, if, uh... Roman kind of went, you know, 12 squirrel opener. Probably, again, abuse this high ground. Roman going to match suit with the cam. And we will have to see how this one pans out as the game progresses. Thanks everybody for tuning in. It's always super fun. And yeah, after this, we're going to have the desserts, the desserts round. Uh, whatever the, what do we, we got to do the lotteries and then people need to submit their investigation contest if you haven't already. And then we'll determine who the best factions are, or teams, uh, to, to go to the finals. And here's that cliff abuse I was talking about earlier. You can see that already one pig dies before Zen can really ex uh, respond, but Roman's actually going to get cleaned up really hard here. Kind of overcommits. Zen's actually running away from that cam a little bit. Roman's getting a bit greedy trying to go for another pig or another falcon, but gets a little unfortunate there. Doesn't get either. That falcon barely living. Roman's going to follow up this aggression, though, and continue to rally. I think Roman should probably be waiting for that second cam. Falcons are super strong, especially with a few pigeons to back them up with defender's advantage. Do a ton of damage here. And yeah, the defense from Zen has been so good. Roman, a bit frustrated there, taps out early, realizes that they've lost just too much value in the army already. And Zen will take the series 2-0. to zero. Oh wait, oh wait, I forgot. We play all three games no matter what, don't we? <laughs> I was ready to do my transition. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's three matches no matter what. So, because that's not how points are scored here. So we do have a third match here. Sorry, I got all excited with my transitions. So over on the right, Zen, feeling pretty good with two wins. Over left on side, Roman with the Toads. Let's go. Toads are such a fun unit. So we're back to Gimbu Ravine here. And only the Badger out of Roman. Triple tier 3 from Zen. 
Both army comps a little bit wonky. I think the, the on game three, like the competitive edge of it's gone down a little bit, which you know is easy to kind of think about. But hey, every point matters. It's not really about how you do in the best of three. It's how you score overall in your uh, in your group. So one two is a lot different than o three. So we gotta let this one breathe a little bit here. Might do a bit of fast forwarding through the early game until some big decisions get made. So Grismill expand both sides off a single Warren. Interesting Zen decided to take the low base down here. I love this move by Roman, by the way. It's a great way to punish an early expand, especially if they skipped Warrens, but Zen does have units. However, they are pretty far away. And this should go down before the squirrels get here. Oh no 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 no! You gotta no target the target the bill. Finish off the bill. Oh, but actually, you know what? Good decision from uh, Roman here. And it looks like Zen was setting up to do the same thing. Wow! Look at this, Roman. Okay. You know what? I thought target the mill, but I was wrong. By targeting those units. Uh, Roman was able to take a good trade and then finish the mill off. So now would be a good time to back up, get out of here, sell the moles. Yeah, nice victory there for Roman. Now the only downside is they're on the offensive for so long. They've got a ton of money floating. They try to remedy that very quickly by making a ton of tier one. And Roman should just let this mill go. Like, just let the mill go. Give your tier one units a little bit of time to build. Yeah, let's see it. I want to see Roman just get super aggressive here. That looks like that will be the plan. I'd love to see the moles just uh, really get blown apart by the toads. That'd be that'd be a good time for me personally. Squirrel toad moving in. Here we go. Uh, uh, some good connections. People are sleeping on toads, man, I tell you what. <clears throat> that was one of my two claim to fame uh, balance changes. I had, a, I had a fun one and a silly one that I convinced Andy to do. One of them was I made the case that toads should not be slowed down in water because they're amphibious. And he did indeed make that change, um, which is just kind of funny. And then the other balance change was, <clears throat> um, oop, Roman might actually be getting in here. Come on, yeah, get some good connections here, nice. Yeah, the, the Toad's a great job there. Well, yeah, the other balance change was making it to where you pretty much always spawn with a natural expansion on uh, on the random maps. Because if you just don't have a, an expansion, it really really messes up the game. Obviously, it's not every time, but it's a lot more than it used to be. Ooh, that one pig barely doesn't die. Hey, what's up, ghosts? Good to see you, man. Alright, I believe in the toads. Let's go. Let's go, toads! So, some pretty good connects there. Not gonna quite be enough to kill Zen just yet. But Roman's got a lot of tempo. Question is, do they want to keep this going or not? Sell down a good bit. Yeah, this game's so scrappy, like, are you really gonna try to expand now? <laughs> oh! Oh, wait, I, I, for some reason I thought those were Zen's Mulhorns. I don't know, I thought of that when I was making the explosion noise. I was like, what am I, 12? Alright, here we go, guys! <laughs> oh, it's just fun. Let me enjoy my Toad game, okay? I only get one of these once every blue moon. 
Which, by the way, we had a blue moon like a couple weekends ago. Great job by Roman. Really fun game. So Roman will put a point on the board uh, in, in this series 1-2. to two.